In this lesson, we are going to be looking at perfect squares of fractions and decimals. And how do we know if a fraction is a perfect square or if a decimal is a perfect square? So we're starting off here with a square because we're talking about squares. So I have a square here, right? I have a 7 by 7 square. We know the area of this square is 49 if we have this whole distance here is 7 and we have a whole distance here is 7. So we have a 7 by 7 square which gives me an area inside of 49. Now let's say we only wanted 25 of these 49 squares. So if I reorganize this like this, so I have 25 of these 49 squares. It kind of looks like that. I'm going to now highlight this so we know which section I'm looking at. We're looking at this right here, this 25. It's 25 here of 49. Okay? Now, what did we say? We're looking at 25 out of 49. So that's just the same as 25 out of 49. Now, let's see here if I wanted to figure out what is the side length of this. So we have an area, and I want to know what is the side length. That's like taking the square root of this. Okay, so if I want to take the square root of this, we're looking at the side lengths. Well, I know the square root, the side length, the square root of 49 is 7. Now we want to look at the square root of this side length here of the 25 by 25. That's going to give me 5. And this one here is 5 as well. So essentially what we're doing is we're square rooting the 25 and we're square rooting the 49. And square root of 25 is equal to 5 and square root of 49 is equal to 7. So if we're ever square rooting a fraction, what we want to do is square root both the top, the numerator, and square root the denominator. And first check if the numerator or denominator are perfect squares. And if they are perfect squares, then my fraction is a perfect square. Now let's say if I change this here, and I added a bit more. So I added these five here. So I'm adding this right here, and I wanted the square root So now I'm looking at a shape where I have square root of 30 over 49. Okay? Now I look at this, there's almost no way I could rearrange these shapes here, move this here, to make a perfect square. There's no way I could rearrange these shapes there to make a square. Hey, and we already know that already, 30 is not a perfect prime. Because if I look at 30 here, this goes 30, and we want to take the square root of 30, break it down into its primes. That's the same as 6 multiplied by 5. Well, there's one prime, then we have a 2 and a 3. There are no pairs of primes there. Not every prime factor has a pair. Therefore, 30 is not a perfect square. So if I broke this down to square root of 30 all over square root of 49, yes, 49 works, but 30 does not. That's not a perfect square. So then I know this fraction here is not a perfect square. Okay? So basically what this diagram here showed us was all we need to do is square root the denominator and square root the numerator. And if we square root both of those and they are both perfect squares, then my fraction is a perfect square. Okay, so let's try some trickier ones. Now, there's a little bit more to this than that. So let's try something like this. This is going to be a little bit of a trickier fraction. So I'm going to say 50 over 98. Okay, and I want the square root of 50 over 98. So first thing I want to do is simplify this fraction if possible. So step one is simplify the fraction. 
I could simplify this fraction because both 50 and 98 are divided by 2. So this is the same thing as saying square root of 25 over 49. Now, I know that both of these are perfect squares. So this here is the same as square root of 25 divided by square root of 49. And I could square root 25, which gives me 5, and the square root of 49 is 7. So the square root of 50 over 98 is the same thing as saying 5 over 7. Okay? So step 1, we simplify the fraction. Step 2, we square root the denominator, square root the numerator. Or, sorry, square root the numerator, square root the denominator. Step 3 is if they, we write them down if they are perfect squares. If they are not, then it's not a perfect square. Now, let's try decimals. I'm going to show you two ways of doing decimals. So here is the first way if we look at a decimal. So let's look at my first question here. Let's look at 0 0.36. Okay? So this is one way we could do it. And I can make 0 0.36 into a fraction. So that is equivalent to 36 over 100. All right? Now that it's a fraction, I could just take the square root of it. So let's look at this here. I could square oh, sorry, one the square root of 0 0.36. So now we want to just make it into a fraction. And now I know both the square roots of both of these. That's the same thing as square root of 36 all over square root 100 which gives me 6 over 10, which is the equivalent of 0 0.6. So we could do it that way also. Once we make it to a fraction, we know how to square root a fraction. Okay? So let's take a look at another one here. Let's try uh, 0 0.016. Okay? And I want to square root that. All right. So 0 0.016, we move the decimal over three times. This is really over one, so I have to move the decimal over three times. So I'm going to get 16 over one, move the decimal, one, two, three. So that's going to be 1,000, or times both by 1,000 to get rid of it. Put it into a fraction. All right, now I want to separate into square root of 16 all over square root 1,000. <gasps> What's the problem here? I know the square root of 16 is 4. Now, square root of 1,000, I break it up, that's 10 times 100, which is 10 times 10, which is 2 and 5, 2 and 5, circle my primes, and we have another 2 and 5, circle the primes. I look at this now, I have one pair of 2's, and another pair, oh, nope, and one pair of 5's. Now, I have this 2 here, and this 5, they don't have a pairs, so this is not a perfect square. Okay? So this here does not work. It is not a perfect square. We will learn in another lesson how to estimate that. Now, here is my second way of doing decimals. Okay. This is the way I actually do it. And I'm going to start off with a little bit of an exploratory here. So let's look at this here. If I go 0 0.6 multiplied by 0 0.6, what is 6 times 6? 6 times 6 is 36. Now, when we multiply, remember, we have to add how many numbers are behind the decimal. Here I have one, two numbers behind the decimal. So in this case here, I'm going to have two numbers behind the decimal. Okay? So now let's look backwards. If I took the square root of 36, Hmm, my answer is just going to be 0 0.6. We have two numbers here behind the decimal. Here we have one. Let's take a look at another one. I'm going to try 0 0.12 multiplied by 0 0.12. That's going to give me 12 times 12 is 144. Okay? Now, 
if I look at this here, what's happening? I have two numbers behind, two numbers. I have altogether four. So I need to move the decimal over one, two, three, four. So I'm going to get 0 0.014. Now if I square root this, my square root is just this. Huh. Here we have four numbers behind the decimal. My square, my root of that only has two. So here is my hint for these. Basically, every time I'm square rooting a number, I have to half the numbers behind the decimal. Okay? For my root. My root of a perfect square will have half the numbers behind the decimal. So let's try one here. Let's try the square root of 2.89. All right? We want the square root of 2.89. Now, I know the square root of 289 is equal to 17. Right? So I'm going to write that down. 17. Now, how many numbers here do I have behind the decimal? Two. So my answer is only going to have to have one number behind the decimal because we're going to half the amount behind the decimal. But now let's look at a different one here. Let's look at if I took the square root of 0 0.289. Okay? Once again, we know the square root of 289 is 17. Now, here's the problem with this one here. We have three numbers behind the decimal. So if we half that, we need 1.5 numbers behind the decimal. So if I put the decimal, I want to go one and a half. So I put the decimal there, and then I put a zero underneath the one. That doesn't make sense. Or do I only draw half the one or half the seven? It doesn't make sense. So this here is not a perfect square. So, here are, I'm going to give one more as an example. So let's try the square root of 225. Or I'm going to say square root of 0 0.025. Let's move this up. Square root of 0 0.0225. Okay. So, I know the square root of 225 is 15. Now, I look at this, I have four numbers behind the decimal, so that means I'm going to half the amount of numbers behind the decimal to get the root, which is going to give me 0 0.15. So my answer here is 0 